Using the MBTI can make you happier at work, but how do you use the MBTI to make better decisions about your career and about your approach to work? Well, find out that and more in today's video. My name is Eric Dorr and while there's lots of people that argue that the MBTI and personality psychology has little relevance to our happiness and well-being, there's actually lots of studies that indicate that paying attention to your personality traits, noticing your character strengths, your values, and key abilities in your life, you can make happier life decisions. The book Flow by Mihaly Shikimentiali, a name who I cannot pronounce, there's this argument that when we attain flow, we do so through engaging in an activity which we have an aptitude for, we're skilled at it, we worked hard at it over a longer amount of time, and we feel it is our passion, right? So if we feel that something is our passion, if we feel it is a character strength, and if we work hard to improve at it and get better at it, our ability to experience flow and enjoyment in these situations increases, right? So how do we apply that to the MBTI? Well, there's been lots of studies where we, for example, had people take assessments to determine what their strongest character traits and strengths were, right? So for example, did a person have an aptitude for kindness or discipline or for being honest, right? Here, thinking about your character strengths and mapping out and reflecting on what the, your loves are, what your values are, what you enjoy doing, what feels good for you, is a great exercise in becoming more aware of your personal life. How do I want to organize my life? What do I want to spend my time on? What are things that make me happy? And here there are two traditions. Some argue that we should focus on our passions and make our job our passion. Others argue that instead we should work on our weaknesses and instead we should try to seek balance, learning to master our inferior functions and seeking a job or career which allows us to develop these abilities. But if the choice is about happiness and flourishing, most of the time the argument is focus on your character strengths. And so if you're an introvert, you might do better in an environment which allows you to work in an introverted style. A job culture which is stressful, which often forces in deadlines, which asks you to rush things, and which tends to reward being outgoing, dominant, and socially expressive, can be very difficult for an introverted person, especially an introvert that is very introverted, right? And here, you have to take a nuanced approach. Consider how strong your scores for each of the different dichotomies and cognitive functions are and recognize when you have something that is a strong passion in your life. Certainly there's going to be a lot of things, a lot of traits and a lot of cognitive functions which you are relatively flexible on. Yes, it's okay for you to step up and take a more social role at work and it doesn't really matter that much for your energy or motivation. And sure, you can take a more organizational role at work at times and that's also fine for you. But most people have certain things that are big motivators in their personal life. And studies have also shown that when people engage in a task or activity which is closely aligned with their core motivations, they tend to produce better results. They are work more effectively. They spend more energy on such things. And they produce higher quality work. And so an extrovert might want to think about how they can work in a more extroverted style. Well, first of all, yes, you can choose to move towards another career. You can take up studies. It's not too late to start a new education that's more closely aligned with what you want. But yes, you can also have a conversation with your manager or your boss. You can talk about different roles or tasks that you could take up in the future. If you find that there is something you could do at work that you would enjoy more, don't be afraid to talk with your boss and say and ask if it's possible for you to take on more chores and more abilities and more responsibilities in this direction. And perhaps ask them if it's possible to let go of certain tasks, things that you don't enjoy and things that you find stressful. There's nothing wrong with having a passion and enjoying something. And if you are, for example, an extroverted intuitive, you might benefit from engaging in tasks and work which allows you to engage in non-stop learning and research. Because extroverted intuitives tend to enjoy language quite a lot, extroverted intuitives might, for example, want to work in a career which allows them to switch and learn different languages and to use their language skills to their advantage. 
They might also enjoy working in a field such as communication in which you're requested to be and to pay more attention to your words, your language and how you talk and articulate things, right? Similarly, if you are an introverted sensing type, you might enjoy engaging in work that rewards attention to detail. If it's important to work with a step-by-step -step approach, if organization is key to success, if you need to pay attention to and work with long-term projects that require patience, introverted sensing types will do tremendously well. And the truth is, you know, there's always going to be competition. Just because you're born with an aptitude for something, and just because in your childhood and throughout your education, you started developing talents in a certain area, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be competitive in this area, right? And so you might have to still spend some time engaging in further education and lessons and exercises that allow you to improve in these skills. If you have a passion for something, but find that you don't really have the skills in this area yet, consider what you can do to further improve and educate yourself in those areas. Are there things that you can do? Are there classes you can take? Are there courses available? Is there books that you can read? Or are there hobbies or chores or tasks that you can engage in on a daily basis that will help you improve in these areas? For example, if you want to be a writer but find that you don't have the skills for writing, what are things that you can do to engage in writing in a more daily basis? Journaling or reading, what things could help you improve in this area, right? And so, for example, if you find that you are an introverted feeling type and you enjoy spotting nuances in people's words, tone of voice or emotions, and you find yourself fan fantasizing about a job, for example, as a counselor, don't be afraid to think about, you know, starting up an education in psychology or taking up a coaching course or finding ways to learn more basic psychology so that you can improve in this area. The truth is, just having an aptitude for something doesn't mean that we're perfect and there is always room for improvement. Every single person can improve and the more you improve in a task, the more your capacity to enjoy and find flow doing it. People often have the misconception that if I spend too long working on something or learning something, I'm going to get bored and I'm going to lose interest. But that's because we don't correctly identify our passions. The truth is, what we found is, if we look at people that are professional athletes or professional chess players or professional musicians, the more skilled you are at something, the more you can engage in, the more often you will experience flow the more long-term your experiences of flow will be and the more intense these experiences will be. This is because your entire brain has learned to engage fully in this task. Every single neuron is involved in this in some way and your entire brain and body has been practiced, rehearsed over a long period of time to engage in this. And so you can experience so much enjoyment and so much pleasure in this activity. A lot of people, especially extroverted intuitives, tend to find that they often get bored with activities. But for example, what tends to be the case is that extroverted intuitives enjoy learning and novelty. And so you need a career which engages and rewards you with constant non-stop novelty. And so here are key factors to consider, right? When you come into a job, you might find that, well, this workplace has a very distinct attitude and culture. In some organizations, things are very structured. There's routines and processes for everything. In a judging workplace, there's usually straightforward flows and processes. There is rules, guidelines, and laws and principles that are used to make decisions and to efficiently manage meetings in an effective and quick paced tempo. When you're working in a perceiving organization, you might instead notice that in general, this company is much more flexible. There is freedom here. You can do what you want. If a new thing comes up, there is no process or guideline to look at. You just have to improvise and think on your feet. And so a lot of companies argue about whether there should be more guidelines, more processes and more structure, or whether there should be more freedom, more open-endedness and more ability to improvise. As a person, you always have the right to voice and express what it is that you personally want and what it is that is important for you. And if you stay shut, if you stay silent about what it is that you want from your work and from your career, 
you'll probably find that your motivation is going to gradually drop and so is your performance. And so if you find that you're very passionate about making a difference and that you enjoy being kind and helping other people, but find that you're in a culture which is very cutthroat, very competitive and very ambitious, where money is the primary metric of success, you might find that I'm not really motivated here. And so you might want to tell your boss that, hey, if you want me to be passionate about this, or if you want me to be more motivated, I really enjoy working on projects that are more social in their nature, where I can feel that I do something for people, right? And so if you have any projects or if you have any tasks or that will involve a lot of contact or a chance to do something good for others, get me on board and you're going to find I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm going to work really hard at this because that's something that I really care about. Making choices about careers can be difficult and the MBTI can be a tool to make the positive decision, the right decision about your happiness and your well-being. But remember, the MBTI is a spectrum and you can't look too blindly at the recommended careers for your personality type. Instead, try to take an open approach and try to think actively about what it is that you enjoy and what you find stressful. Try to get really in-depth and really nuanced about things that you like and dislike because it turns out maybe you enjoy 90% of your work, but there is this 10% that's just really stressful for you and really hard on you, right? And if you think about it, perhaps you might make a very black and white judgment. I hate my job. Or whenever this happens, whenever this comes up, you're like, oh my God, I just want to quit. I'm, I'm done. This is too much for me, right? But if you're able to think about it clearly and accurately, you might notice that, hey, actually, I do enjoy a lot of these things. But why do I not like that? Why is that so difficult for me? Why is it so difficult for me when a competition or an environment gets too cutthroat or too competitive? Why do I find it hard to work around extroverts? Why do I find myself getting drained when I get criticism? Or why is it so hard for me when people respond emotionally or when I forget about social boundaries or cultural cues in this environment or workplace? Typically, we all have our pet peeves and we all have things that we don't like, of course, and no job or no situation is gonna be perfect. But if you can recognize and work through these things, you can also organize your own workplace to be as positive for you as possible. And so you can develop strategies to work around your weaknesses. Strategies can be, for example, things that directly allow you to avoid these kind of situations, or it can be strategies to make these things more easy on you. For example, if it's hard for you to deal with straight up criticism from your boss or coworkers, it can be helpful to tell them that, hey, I'm okay with criticism and you're very welcome to leave me criticism, but I need some time to process it. And if you're able to uh, also tell me something nice and complimentary at the same time, it's much easier for me to process these things, right? Like if you, if you notice these things, strategies that you can use that help you digest and understand these things, it can be really beneficial for you also managing these situations better. So imagine that you're a sensing personnel type and you're stuck at a workplace full of intuitives, right? Lots of ideas flying around and people tend to get caught up in these long meetings where they talk about nothing, just brainstorming, throwing things around and coming up with all these kinds of scenarios and what ifs, right? Now imagine you're in this situation and you have no idea what these people are talking about, you know? Uh, it sounds to you like it's just buzzwords, it's just nonsense, it's just hypothetical fluff, right? Now, here, a lot of the time, of course, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and say and think about how you can contribute to this environment. What can you do to make this more practical? What can you do to offer examples or a straightforward line of action? What can you do to bring things down to earth if things fly too far out? And if these things happen, if these scenarios exist, how can you make sure that there's also environments in this workplace which allow for more control and more stability, right? Often, when we build bigger companies, we're going to end up with companies with a wide range of personality types. When we work in small companies, it's easy for a certain group of personalities to click up. But when we start expanding, we have to allow for more perspectives. While a lot of people dream of a uniform company where everyone has the same mindset, the same values, and the same approach, the strongest, healthiest, and the biggest companies are generally thriving and diverse in viewpoints and in opinions. You're going to have different organizations within the company with all their different opinions and views. 
ultimately most workplaces are quite modular, allowing different ranges of perspectives. We have different organizations and teams, and all of them have different priorities. And here, you got to think about also, what is my team? What kind of people do I enjoy working with? What kind of people do I like to spar with? With who do I feel I have the best discussions? The final thing to think about when using the MBTI for your workplace is learning to understand how different personalities think. Learn to think in emotional volume. For example, if you're dealing with an introverted thinker and you find that they're very bad at communicating, you might want to think about emotional volumes, right? So you might want to increase their vo emotional volume. So when they say something and it sounds very cold, or very, yeah, what should you say, crass, right? Try to increase their emotional volume, right? Like and try to f really see its nuances in how they pronounce it and why they say it and so on, right? So you can make sure to listen to them more attentively. They might seem cold, but often there is more going on underneath that they might not be always able to communicatively express. And if you're dealing with somebody that's very loud and very passionate, somebody who gets easily angry or temperamental or loses their energy or patience at times, right? Try to lose, lower their emotional volume and instead learn to say that, hey, when this person is angry and says this, what they really mean is often something not as strong as what it sounds like. And tomorrow, they're probably gonna be completely fine, right? So here, also learn to listen attentively to people based on who they are and their unique style. Don't expect that everyone at the company will think the same way that you do or feel the same way that you do. Learn that you can learn something from every single person that you talk to. And think about and ask yourself, what is it, what is it that this person can teach me? That's my suggestion for happiness and success at work. I hope this can be helpful for you and good luck with your future career.